Let's gather and celebrate Jesus this morning. And on and on and on and on it goes Till it overwhelms and satisfies my soul And I never, never have to be afraid One thing remains Your love never fails, never gives up, never runs trial and the change one thing remains one thing one thing remains your love never fails never gives up never runs out on me your love never fails never gives up never runs out on me Never gives up, never runs out on me. Oh, your love never fails, never gives up, never runs out on me. Oh, your love never fails, never gives up, never runs out on me. Oh, your love. I want to welcome everyone that's joining with us this morning by web and those that are here. And I don't know about you, but I'm excited. This is Passover week. This is a week that where we remember what kind of love that was that took Jesus and nailed Him to a cross in order for our uh, relationship with the Father to be restored. This is the week to me that is the essence of who we are and whose we are. So Lord, today we want to come and celebrate. Celebrate that time, Lord. That day, that moment, those hours, Lord, that you went and suffered on Calvary in order for us to know that you had made a way. You fought the forces of hell and were resurrected triumphant, Lord, so that we could be reunited with our Father. So, Lord, we thank you for that love that drove you out of your place, your heavenly home, reducing your glory into a human form to be nailed to a cross. We say, Lord, this is the week where we want to remember all that you did, Lord, in that time. In Jesus' name. Oh, in death and life, I'm confident and covered by the power of your great love. By death there's nothing that can separate my heart from your great love. Your love never fails, never gives up, never runs out on me. Your love never fails, never gives up, never runs out on me. Oh, your love never gives, never gives up, never runs out on me. i 
covered us and covered by the power of your great love. My death is pain. There's nothing that can separate my heart from your great love. Sing it again in death and life. In death and life, I'm confident covered by the power of your great love. Oh, my debt is paid. My debt is paid. There's nothing that can separate my heart from your great love. Your love never fails. Your love never fails. Never gives up. Never runs out on me. just see it a fresh activation we're going to be hearing from Robert and Chuck both this morning concerning faith and in their personal walk and how at different points there were keys that the Lord used to activate and move them forward in their faith but if if we've ever stood in a time in history I mean those of us that are alive today where that faith is called to expand it's now we look around and the Lord is saying Yesterday, the limit, the way that you believed me or the way that you knew me is not going to be enough. It's pressing, pressing, pressing to know him greater and more. And the Lord's had me in Hebrews ever since the first in the sign. He said, this is where it all culminates. This is the thing. This is the book. This is the Passover book for the new covenant. And he said, as you, as you get into this and you see the power that uh, was released at Calvary and at the resurrection, the Lord said, you begin to say, oh, you know, uh, where my faith was yesterday in believing for certain things, I can see that the Lord is activating. So what I want this morning from all of us, I want you to set your heart right now to, to begin during this week to believe God, to release your faith, to have a greater level of faith for those things that are going on in your life, in your nation's life, in the nations of the earth. This, the Lord is saying, I am calling for a people who have an, a no boundary on their faith. Faith without borders. The Lord said, this is the day of moving into the supernatural for my people to be made manifest in this earth in such a way that they will, that those will look and say, who is this God that they serve? Who is this God that they serve? So Lord, today we would say, move us from the ordinary to the extraordinary of faith, Lord. Move us out of what we've known into the complete unseen unknown world Lord of faith we say we're willing to go Lord take us where we haven't gone before in that faith in Jesus name and if our God is for us then who could ever stop us and if our God is with us then who could stand against and if our God is for us then who could ever stop us and if our God is with us, then who could stand again? And if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? Celebrate it! And if our God is with us, then who could stand again? And if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then who could stand again?
testimony about God increasing faith. Um, this weekend is the one year anniversary of Robert's first retinal detachment. So yesterday afternoon, about 5.30, he said, you know, last year we had to be at the hospital at 6. So this is about the time I was driving blind through downtown Fort Worth. And we just said, God, you are greater. You are greater. And when I look back at where I was last year, and I mean, I've shared about all the different issues, especially with driving and stuff like that. And I look at where I am this year. I just say, God, you have increased our faith in an unbelievable way. You have increased us and removed limitations and boundaries. And I just thought, my gosh, if he could do all that through all that we went through last year, what can he do in this coming year? And where will I be next year at Passover? God, we want our faith to increase and anything you have to put us through to do that, we say, yes, we are willing, we are submitted, we're going to see the end for the joy set before us. We're going to endure to see what you will do with us to make us a strong people of faith whose boundaries are expanded and whose limits are gone. And you know, uh, today is the day that Jesus, he had to have faith to endure the cross. And that he went in, and he went triumphantly in. He didn't go in cowering, he went in with his head held high, and he said, the Lord has given me this. And as Linda was speaking, I, I, I heard the Lord say that, where is your faith? Uh, is it is it down here or are you expecting that which uh, which is the impossible that which you don't even think you can endure for the next week but the, the Lord says that that he went before you and he went full of faith with his head held high so so in uh, so we declare over this week we say that we will walk through this week we will have faith to overcome our enemies and that we will go through we will be a people who pass over we are hebrews as as janice was saying she's been in hebrews you are a hebrew you are grafted in over the web you are grafted in wherever you're standing in this hour you are a hebrew you're grafted in by the blood of jesus and that he did it completely complete and entirely entire that there is nothing nothing that can stand against you because the Lord has gone before you to establish faith to endure the cross and I say that in the name of Jesus arise in this hour and walk through walk through walk through and overcome your enemies For the joy set before us, for the joy set before us, for the joy set before us. execution and release and I remember years ago Ann and I were listening to and I don't remember what the series of at the time it was tapes that Chuck had done but he had been at a conference and he had done his whole series on some subject and every time he would start to speak he would say now blah 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 now blah 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 I said Ann he is speaking and calling faith up if I ever heard it Hebrews said now faith is now faith is now faith is 
it also says it's substance and evidence. And I want to share a testimony with personal. For me, faith for years was pretty elusive. It didn't, I couldn't get my, I couldn't get my spirit around what faith was. And at the time, I was with a group of people who said, well, if you just confess it enough, it'll happen. And, uh, you know, you'll get faith as you just parrot it over and over certain things. And, well, that didn't work for me. I mean, I tried it. I did it. But it didn't work. And then the Lord said, faith comes by hearing. And all of a sudden, I knew when I heard His voice. In any situation, His voice dispelled all doubt, all unbelief. It gave me whatever level and measure of faith I needed to do what He had spoken into me. His voice is the one and is what releases that level of faith. And you don't have to have a gift of faith. Although a lot of people move, we see people with incredible faith in certain areas. And the Lord has given them a supernatural gift of faith in healings or miracles. But what the Lord is saying is it can be the size of a mustard seed. The moment His voice hits it is the minute it becomes gigantic. It becomes an overcoming faith that says, I can move with this. I can do this. The Lord has spoken. So right now, put your hand on your spirit. Lord, we're asking you, amplify your voice, oh God. We are asking you, speak and your servant can hear that that faith be released to whatever the measure is that you've called for your purpose in that moment. I thank you, Lord. This is not a question of, oh, I have so little faith. It's a question of, I can hear so little of God or so much of God. So, Lord, we're asking right now to amplify that voice in us. And we let go of the religious thought pattern about faith. We say, Lord, by your voice, by your voice, oh, Lord, release that faith in us. Yes, I think Keith last week said this is a time where the, key, the gift of faith is getting ready to blossom and bloom <clears throat> within us. So Lord, we say right now that we're going to have encounter after encounter with you in our private time, in our corporate time, moments where you're going to speak down into us and that is where faith is going to bloom. A mustard seed is the one seed that when you plant it or when it falls into the ground, if a rock is put over it, it will keep moving. It will keep moving and sprouting until it's found a way out from under that rock. And when you see the path of a mustard seed, it circles and it turns and it goes back until it comes out from under that rock. And so, Lord, we say that you're the rock. And we're the mustard seed. And Lord, we say that every time we have an encounter with you, it causes faith to be pushed forward. And we say, Lord, we're living in a time of great faith that we're going to be able to speak and move and have our being in you. And our faith will come up to the bridegroom. We say that we'll stand beside him. That faith will bloom in a way that it never has before. And we'll say, now I have the faith. Now I see the results. Now I'm moving in a new way. I will have the faith of God inside of me to apply to every circumstance and obstacle in my way.
share that because I have a little encounter with the Lord. That's all it takes, really. Uh, several weeks ago, I was just dealing with several situations. It was swirling around me. And so the Lord, said, the Lord asked me one question. He said, what do you really believe? It's not about the object of the answers. It's about what do we believe in here? So it was a basic question, but it get me back to the uh, plumb line. And so, Lord, we thank you, Lord. We said that there are encounters in the spirit, Lord. We said, Lord, that what is it that we believe that you had to get down to the bottom line? The Lord said, there is a bottom line here. What do you believe? I am a God who is able. I am well able to deliver you. I am well able to, to, to raise you from the dead. So, Lord, we thank you, Lord, for resurrection life this week, Lord. We said there's miracles, signs, and wonders because we are going to say, what do I believe? Amen. I'm reaching for the prize. I'm giving everything. I give my life for this. It's what I live for. Nothing can keep me from all that you have for me. You hold my head up high. I live for you. Greater is He that's living in me than He that is in the world. Faith, I can move a mountain. I can do all things through Christ. I know it. Faith, standing and believing. I can do all things. morning when I woke up actually from last night the Lord said would you believe that I can shake the house just because you are there and I said absolutely God so what I want to challenge you this morning is to have faith because you are here the Lord can shake the house can shake the house with the true realm of the supernatural we are too many believers in one corporate gathering for him not to show up with mighty power splendor and glory. So Father, we repent for not believing, not having enough faith to come into your house and believe that you can break this house into a higher dimension of the supernatural. Father, I say signs and wonders are calling in this house this hour. I say, God, the lame will walk, the blind will see, the ones who are broken. Lord, that would hold us in yesterday's faith level, in yesterday's revelation, Lord, of Passover. I ask you, Lord, in the name of Jesus, as we speak to familiarity, we say, break off of us. We're going to a new place. We're going to a higher level of faith. We're moving with the power of the blood of Jesus this year. We say, Lord, beyond what we've known, let us come out of our Greek mindset, Lord, we say this is the expectation of the Spirit of God to where as just as AC released, we should see and expect those kind of miracles daily, Lord. We're saying release us from all familiar belief systems in Jesus' name. Lord, we do break Greece off of our faith right now. Lord, you have said that we are a peculiar people. We are a holy people. Father, we are unique as you are. So we call, Father, we say we have a peculiar faith. We have a unique faith. We have an uncommon faith. Father, we have a faith to say that we believe we can spit on the ground and there is healing in the mud. Father, we have a faith to say, Lord, that we can believe speak to a tree and see it dry up immediately. Father, we say we have a faith to believe for what is unique, for what is singular. It has never been seen before in the earth. 
working on familiarity with Passover. Therefore, we give you room to work in this day how you desire to work. We break that mindset of, we thank you for what you did, but we break the mindset so that you're free to move through each one of us and manifest Passover no matter where we are. Day after day after day after day, because greater is he that lives in me than he that lives in this world, God. You have conventional ways that we've not tapped into. So we yield and out of those encounters, we then begin to manifest the now of Passover in Jesus' name. that you will move aside it's not about what just I want to do through you or what you do it's about what I want you to move aside from your thought processes and the things that you're feeling so that I can do some things there's some things I have in my heart that I'm trying to get down and so I'm trying to pull you up into a new faith level so that I can pull groups of people together and boom I'm trying to bring some things down I'm trying to boom through you and release out of you. It's not that you have to move and get up to a place so that you can do it. It's about that you have to get out of a place and let me move through you. And would you come and pray concerning the Greek mindset? Lord, the Greek mindset sets the man in place instead of you. And so, Lord, it's not what I can conceive. It's not what I can think of. It's not how well my mind works. It's how I connect with you and hear what you have to say over anything. It is your mind. It is the mind of Christ. And we've been promised that we'll have the mind of Christ. But we are, we are uh, unwilling sometimes are unable, we think we're not able, to go into the presence of God and get an answer or to get a strategy or to hear what God says. And so today we are bringing an end to that. And it is, it's not what man can conceive. It's what God says and does. So this is the season, Lord, that we are breaking off what I think should happen and, and going to you and asking you what you want and how you want to do it and not taking on ourselves. Otherwise, we'll never be builders of kingdom. Kingdom is built by the Lord God Almighty, not by us. And so, Lord, we say right now that we give up our Greek mindset and we ask you this week to draw us into a place where we have so identified that in a higher way so that we are not dependent upon ourselves. It is the height of idolatry. It is the height of idolatry. So Lord, we say that our prayer closets and our prayer times are going to receive the greatest workout they've ever had because we are not going to open our mouth to prophesy or to speak what we don't hear God say because what I say is worthless. What he says is everything. He will burn up everything that has the scent of man on it. It will be wood, hay, and stubble. So Lord, we thank you for the testimonies in the body of Christ that Chuck and Robert are bringing forth. We thank you for every testimony in every heart that is being formed. And we say, Lord, that you're going to build kingdom just like that. And that is why last week when Linda prophesied that people will go and do something simply because it's like separate unto me, Paul and Barnabas. I have something for you to do. That's based on their ability to hear and obey. Say that. Hear and obey. But if you don't hear, you can't obey. You can't do a facsimile of it by figuring out what you think he might want you to do. So, Lord, we lay all that aside and we say that our worship, our understanding, our testimonies are building. We are hearing how they are formed and 
and we are participating in the formation that you want done in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Ann. Yesterday, um, some things happened last week, and it was very evident that I was going to have to have a new vehicle. And I really wasn't ready to do that yet. I was going to wait several months. But it became evident I needed to. So, <laughs> anyway, the Lord directed this path in such a way. I had a plan that I was going to execute. And it, as it got closer and closer to that plan, the Lord was speaking to me through several people, most of all our beloved prophet Keith, and said, that's not the way of the Lord. Okay. <laughs> so back to the prayer closet, as Ann says. But the Lord did such a miraculous thing yesterday in what he provided for me to drive. And it's beyond anything that I thought was possible financially, socially, any other way, if you want to call it. But the Lord said, these are the days where I will move. And I, I saw this in the area of provision because the Lord has been, he's been doing some things with me over the last couple of months that have been just jaw dropping I have to tell you in the financial realm and the Lord said this is the hour where my people are going to rise up and he said because the favor of God is upon them the favor of God is upon them See, they went, it, it had nothing to do with what I was expecting to happen I have to tell you yesterday was the Lord saying I chose this this is what I chose when I was able to hear him say that I I didn't have a problem struggling with the plan when I knew it was him. So know that the Lord, he is very, um, he will interrupt any area of your life. <laughs> he will interrupt any plan that you have. If you're saying, Lord, not my will, but yours be done. Uh, there's one thing about faith that we have to get. The word says faith is the substance. It's the evidence of things not seen. So faith is an element in the unseen. All right? It's an element. It's it's a fact. It's a substance in the unseen. And we live in two realms. We live in the seen realm that the word tells us is going to pass away. It's not eternal. We live in the unseen world that is eternal. You see, we're surrounded by kingdom right now. We are surrounded by kingdom right now. And faith is part of that kingdom. The angelic is part of that kingdom. The glory of God. When we come in here, we need to expect to come into a realm of glory. A realm of the kingdom. We need to have our thinkers engaged in a way. And thinking can be Greek. But thinking in our minds that have been conformed to the knowledge of Jesus, our Savior, our Passover Lamb, can be good. So we need to be intentional about coming into this place and saying, I'm walking into the glory of God. I'm walking into a place where I can take hold of something in the unseen and I can bring it forward forth into the scene that's what faith is we we feel it we see it we grab it we speak it we say be thou removed to that mountain and it shall be removed and so lord we're coming in here today and as a corporate body we're saying we know we're surrounded by kingdom we know the angels are here we say we will reach up and we will take hold of that evidence we will take Take hold of that substance and we will bring it into this realm. We will bring it out of the unseen into the sea. We say, Lord, we are here to bring our faith into a realm where we begin to walk in miracles, where we begin to move in the glory of God, not just in this house, but everywhere we go. Lord, we decree we are your people we say come come and change us change us do whatever it takes to get us knowing feeling moving in you i want to give a test
testimony that will increase your faith as you pray. I got a phone call this week and I, I didn't, um, they left a voice message. They didn't leave a name. They just said, call me back. I need to talk to you. I'm reading Robert Hodler's book and I have some questions, so call me. Click. That was left a phone number. So I called them back this week and they said, oh, okay. Well, let me tell you, um, I'm from Texas, but I, I'm in Louisiana now, but um, I came here as a prostitute. And uh, I was here and, um, you know, and me and my pimp got busted. And um, so uh, we got arrested, but she said I was 17, so they didn't count this as prostitution, it was human trafficking. And so my pimp got arrested for taking a minor across state lines for uh, human trafficking. And she said, um, they called in the FBI and the FBI man looked at me and he, and he said, do you know God? And I said, I said to him, well, yes, I know God. And he said, well, I just thought I should check. And she said, they sent me to jail and there I really began to call out to God. And she said, God met me in, in jail. And they didn't send me to detention and they didn't put me in jail. They put me in, I'm, I'm not sure what, it's some kind of program or house or something that she's in. And she said, my spiritual mother there gave me experiencing the spirit. And I started reading it. And she said, I just had lots, I had lots of questions about it. She said, but then two weeks ago, this man came and he began to pray for us. And he prayed for me and the power of God hit me. And I started talking in tongues. And my whole life has changed. And I can't remember any of the questions I had now. And I said, well, I am so glad I got to talk to you because we have prayed for women like you. We have prayed for God to intervene. We have prayed for the pimps to get caught. We have prayed for women to get rescued and not just rescued out of that, but rescued into the Lord, into the spirit, into the kingdom. I said, we have prayed for you. And she said, well, it's funny because my sister's here with me and we were just talking about glory of Zion when you called and she told me you're having a conference next weekend and that I can watch it online and I can watch it on happy Friday and her sister was next to her saying good Friday good Friday good Friday she, oh yeah yeah good Friday I'm gonna be watching your conference so I mean, I knew the Lord, that was a gift to me to get that phone call. And this is a gift to us for the Lord to say, if you see this one, believe me, there are many others that I am breaking in. I am intervening. I am parting the Red Sea and I'm bringing them through. And I'm not just bringing them out of Egypt. I'm bringing them into the promise. So God, we just, we repent for all the times we just prayed and never thought about it. We expect that when we pray according to your will, you will do it. And Lord, we thank you for letting us share the joy of what you did in that girl's life. So Lord, we receive this, a Passover gift. This testimony, Lord, where death passed over her. We thank you for it, Lord. And we begin to acknowledge big, little testimonies. Every testimony, Lord, that is of you is big. We say, Lord, we thank you for this one. We thank you for all of those that are you delivering out of captivity, Lord, and bringing into the peace of the kingdom of God. We acknowledge this as a gift from you, Lord, in Jesus' name. And Lord, right now, we call in every testimony. We say that, that now faith is and that miracles, signs, and wonders are happening every day as a result of things that we are doing here corporately. But the enemy has got the mouth of the testimony sealed. Now we say, open your mouth and testify. Email at Chuck P at Gloria Zion dot org and send 
your testimonies in. Now, here's how we're going to end. Um, Ann, Marty, Melinda, uh, Rebecca Cook, if y'all, uh, Raymond, if y'all would come up. We've got some oil here. And what I want us to do, there's, as we know, there's no magic about the oil. But we want a new anointing to begin to rise up within us for that level of faith that the Lord is calling for this morning that just will not... Uh, be moved by what your natural eye sees or your natural ear hears that out of the voice of that third heaven will come such a level of faith that it'll be water walking faith it'll be just like was released there won't be anything in front of us that will intimidate or stop the release of kingdom through us as that faith is activated so y'all just come up get anointed as John and, and Judah uh, takes us out you're the higher power darkness cannot stand no longer bound to sin I am free You're the high